Hi, I'm Allison O. Griffin. Um, some of y'all might know me and my husband, Peter Griffin. We're the um, honeymooners of nine months here because <laughs> of COVID. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for this body and this church. Y'all have been such an encouragement to our faith, and especially as we're building the foundations of our marriage. We just love y'all. Um, <laughs> um, so in 2012, um, I remember my first panic attack. It was in front of the Chick-fil-A at UT Austin. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> um, but it was, in, it was on Halloween, and I ended up waking up in the hospital. And the doctors came in, and they said, Ma'am, when's the last time you've eaten? And I said, I don't, I don't remember. And he says, well, you're 88 pounds right now, and you're on the verge of heart failure. Whatever you're doing, you're killing yourself. So immediately he diagnosed me with depression, an eating disorder, anxiety, and prescribed me on a slew of pills. And so immediately I started working with a team of doctors, nurses. I had a dietitian, a nutritionist, a counselor, a therapist, a psychiatrist, um, the best health care you can have in Austin. And yet my mental health kept deteriorating. I, I, ended up, um, I ended up having more and more suicidal thoughts and ended up trying to take my life away twice that year. So my parents intervened and they believed it was best for me to medically drop that semester. And so I went back home to Houston for treatment. Well, a little background of my, or the, the background um, of my childhood, I am the granddaughter of two Buddhist monks in Houston. So I grew up every weekend learning karate at the Buddhist temple. I spent summers going to Buddhist youth camp. Um, but even though I grew up Buddhist, there was cultural Christianity all around me. And so during my time of healing, it crossed my mind multiple times to turn to the Lord. But instead, I took that bitterness and that anger and I put it towards the cultural expectations of my strict Asian family. So I said, I'm going to take my own life back, and I really just gave in to the message of self-help, self-love, and self-medication. So I came back that next semester. I got a 4.0. I, I went into my career in politics, and I basically patted myself on the back, and I said, I did it. I beat this thing. Well, in 2015, my depression and my anxiety started snowballing again. And on the outside, everything looked like it was in tip-top shape, but inside I was just crumbling like never before. And so I was working at the Texas House of Representatives at that time, and there was one day in May I just I couldn't take it anymore. And I grabbed my bottle of pills from my purse, and I ran to the bathroom. And I just started crying out to God, and I said, God, if you are real, and you're as good as everyone says you are, reveal yourself to me because if not, this life is not worth living. And his presence filled the bathroom and I met Jesus that day. <laughs> he gave me my first vision and I won't go into all the details, but he showed me what my life could be like if I laid down my life to follow him. And it was pure, it was white, it was holy, it was full of peace. And as I'm sitting on a bathroom floor with a bottle of pills in my hand, it couldn't have been a more stark contrast of what my life was currently. And so the very next day, I gave myself to the Lord. So it's been five years of following the Lord. I've been in missions. I've been able to travel to over 20 plus countries and five continents sharing about Jesus. I ended up meeting my husband um, in Israel just last year, and um, now I work with a pro-life ministry out of Texas. And so the world may look at my life and my past and say, wow, like, good job, good for you for getting your life back together. But the most ironic thing is I found my life whenever I laid it down for a man named Jesus. So thank you.